Hey everyone, welcome back to this podcast. I haven't done a podcast in about a month now, and I changed the name to Magnetic Soul Healing from, I don't even remember what the previous name was, but anyways, so I just want to update everyone on my life and what's going on and the transformations that I've had. I went to Panama in Peru in the month of, for the month of February. And when I was there, I wasn't active on any social media stuff because I really wanted to focus on working on myself. I did a lot of inner child work, still continuing that, um, but I'm back in the U.S. for the last couple weeks now. But when I went to Panama, I stayed with a friend and stayed there for about a week and a half, had a beautiful experience, got to stay in a couple beach houses that were on the water if you follow my YouTube channel, you can check out um, some glimpses of that, and I share a little bit about, about my experience going to Panama. And then my next trip was in Peru, which I did a ayahuasca ceremony. I did three of them. I went to uh, Bucalpa, which is like an hour flight from Lima, the capital of Peru. And I had a, another different experience Um doing that and it was like uh I don't want to say another spiritual awakening it it was it was in terms of the pain that I feel and the pain that I have inside like I talk about all these things about being positive and looking at the positive aspects of life and which is true it's like there is so much more good going on than bad but you know it's like there is pain within us there's pain within me not everyone has this pain but majority of the humans in this world have pain and in this modern world that we're in right now it's a little bit difficult to truly just be and be neutral or be happy or be spiritual or whatever you want to be it's you know it's like we're ever-changing human beings with psychological or physiological processes hormone changes environment changes um all these things and it's all related to attachment and being in Panama and Peru I realized how strong my attachment issues are like I have a lot of attachment desires and a lot of I want I don't want to say issues it's just if I look back into my childhood I was abandoned by my parents I was left alone I I was alone a lot as a child which I should not have been you know, as a child, I played a lot and always had play friends um, up until I was about eight or nine. And then I went through puberty and um, that's when my life changed. Like I changed so much. I was like a very happy child, very present, didn't care about what anyone thought. I was free as most children are. Um, but as soon as I started my chi- my period, my childhood... <laughs> As soon as I started my period, um, I became completely depressed and extremely sad. A lot of self-hatred, a lot of feelings of low self-worth, not feeling good about myself, not feeling good about my existence. And I mean, it's okay. That's my life process. And through this journey of going to South America, Central and South America and doing ayahuasca, I realized like how much inner child work I have to do and which I've been doing. And how, like, my attachment style is and also how disconnected I am from my womb and my um, female parts. You know, I'm a woman, I have a vagina, I have a uterus and I have all these things and I thought it was just like that. But there's more to it than that. So when I came back to the States, I um, continue, I I see a chiropractor, a chiropractor every uh, once or twice a week. And she has her own private practice where she does intravaginal chiropractic work. And she introduced this book to me called Wild Women. And I'm reading it. I haven't finished it. Um, but I'm going to reread some of the things because there's some great exercises to do for stuff like healing, actual physical, mus- muscular, and other traumas that we've had in our body, but also emotional traumas. And so I had an appointment with her last week where she did an intravaginal chiropractic thing or whatever. And it was really surprising the things that I felt like I felt pain, but I also had like overwhelming feelings of relief and it's an amazing experience. So it's just like a lot has 
been turmoil inside of me and I feel that the ayahuasca kind of brought that out even further you know like I struggle with obsessive thoughts that's something that I think about that I do that I obsess about people I obsess about things like all these obsessions and I'm just like only if I had this then everything would be good (laughs) or if only I were to be this way or feel this way or think this way then everything would be good but it's like I realize now that everything is good but even though like everything is good and I have these other problems or issues going on like me like heightening those problems and not having a balance between my um, yin yang and the dark and the light side it's like you have to have balance it can't just be like so much positivity and like ignoring the negative side that's just what I'm trying to get across is that you have to also recognize your dark side and those are some of the things that I really recognize during the ayahuasca experience is just like I've you know I've known for years I've had an obsessive mind since I was probably 12 12 years old ever since I started my period my life changed And it's something that I've been working on for some time. But in the past, I would use outlets like drugs and other things, alcohol, to make me forget, which do help. But it's not the best way for your body to to heal from something. And, I mean, me saying this is just saying my new ways of healing. And through, I have a, a new introduction of different practices, which I've learned is like, through nervous system and hormonal regulation, um, breath work, meditation, um, plant medicine as well. I've introduced more plant medicine into my life in this past year, which has really, really freaking helped me. But awareness is the first step. And (laughs) that's the first thing that we have to realize is it's not all these things outside of us. It's really within us. And in my, the second ayahuasca ceremony that I did, I met God God came to me or higher power, however you want to think it. It's not a religious approach. It's not a religious stance or anything. So if that word's triggering to you, that word used to be triggering to me as well. And now I have a different take on it. So higher power or Allah or whoever you think it is for you. Um, By the second ayahuasca ceremony, God came to me as a insect and looked at me very close in the face and grabbed my face with its tentacles or its paws or whatever you call it and um, told me you are not alone know this and I mean you know I could totally do a a couple podcasts about each um, ceremony I actually have on my YouTube channel a couple lives I did explaining each ayahuasca experience which I can do on here too but check out my YouTube channel it's at J-E-S-S-S-A-E. Just say. Okay. Uh, But just wanted to update everyone. I'm going to get back into weekly podcast reviewing um, natural healing modalities, um, ways to reach higher consciousness, ways to heal, ways to be in this modern world and feel good. You know, it's like I want to advocate that you can be spiritual And you can have abundance, but you can also be fucked up. You can also have problems. You can also have like struggle in life. Like that's just uh, the yin yang of life. It's just a natural aspect of life and it's having balance with it. Not saying that you have to, but you have to have struggle in life. But I'm saying that it's okay because I'm kind of, I'm not a basket case like I used to be, but I'm coming from a, a, a really dark background and spirituality and having enlightenment and finding inner peace. Those are like... It's essential for everyone, but it's even more essential for those who have had the most darkness in their life. It's like darkness and traumas are supposed to give you the most wisdom. It's like if you're going to have all those life experiences and just become a victim by it, it's like you're wasting your life. You have to gain wisdom from trauma. That's what I've done. I've been through so much trauma and it's, I'm just grateful that I finally have taken an understanding on it because I've spent so many years of my life just being a victim by it. So it's taking your power back, focusing on yourself, seeing how you interrelate with the humans in this world and this planet Earth, like take care of yourself, but we're really here to serve each other and to help each other. And that's like my huge goal in life is to help as many people as possible heal, uh, learn to feel better about themselves, be okay with themselves, because these are things that I really struggled with of just not being okay with my own existence. 
you know? And it's like, that's not right. We're supposed to feel good. We're supposed to be happy. So it's like, why is it that I don't feel good about something because of the way I look? And it dives a little bit deeper into some superficial stuff, but there's more to us as human beings. And that's just what I want to advocate for sure. Um, this is just an update since I haven't been posting any podcasts in the past month. And I'll be back with a new episode next week. So thanks for tuning in, guys.